Okay, hello everyone, this is John, and I'm here to present uh, my course paper presentation as part of our longitudinal data analysis course. And the topic for this presentation is a brief introduction to survival analysis. I've always been interested in survival analysis, and I always wanted to learn more about this procedure, so I wanted to take this course paper and presentation as an opportunity to do so. Right from the get-go, I've learned that there's a lot of misconceptions I have about survival analysis. So I'm hoping that through this uh, brief introduction, I'll clear up any misconceptions uh, for others, particularly misconceptions I have had, and really how survival analysis can be used and how one can frame the research question to uh, consider uh, survival analysis. So for the outline, I'll be talking about what is survival analysis this is purely going to be on a conceptual level. There's a wide variety of statistical procedures involved in survival analysis. So for the sake of this presentation, it is just going to be on a conceptual level. The next, I'm going to be talking about where survival analysis has been used. It's been used across a wide variety of disciplines, measuring a wide variety of things. So I'm hoping to provide some examples in this presentation to frame how survival analysis can be used. And then, of course, there's some key terms and definitions involved when deciding on whether you want to use a survival analysis. This comes down to how you're going to frame your research question, but at the same time, it involves some of the methodological features you need to incorporate in order to be prepared or equipped for a survival analysis. And finally, I'll be talking about some of the unique features of survival analysis that are a little bit different from some other analysis we may be more familiar with. All right, to begin, what is survival analysis? Well, it is a modeling or set of statistical procedures and it measures time to an event. And what do I mean by this? I really mean, how long does it take for something of interest to occur? Depending on what you're looking to research, depending on what you find interesting, you wanna see how long it takes for that specific thing to occur. So the first thing to do is really understand or frame your research question in a way that is suitable for such a for for a survival analysis. This can involve incorporating when and whether statements and they're very simple. The idea is when does the event occur and whether the event occurs yes or no. When is really just depicting the amount of time that will pass before the interest the event of time or the event of interest occurs. And the weather statement is very simple, does it or does it not occur? If you have such statements within your research question, you're probably heading towards the direction uh, appropriate for a survival analysis. Here in asterisks, I have a little caveat to mention. The chance of events occurring should be equal for all subjects. Roughly, all this is saying that is when you're looking at how long it takes for an event to occur and whether that event occurs, there should be an equal opportunity for all subjects to experience these things. Meaning you wouldn't want in your sample those who will never have a chance of the event occurring. It's just not appropriate for survival analysis. So where has survival analysis been used? As I was mentioning before, I've had some misconceptions about survival analysis. I always viewed it as being somewhat negative, dealing with death and disease. And of course, it has been used in those frames to measure mortality and stuff, um, especially within medicine and bio, in the biomedical field. But of course, survival analysis has expanded across a wide variety of disciplines. Uh, we have it in engineering, for example, and we even have it in the social and behavioral sciences. For example, in engineering, survival analysis is known as failure time analysis and it can be measured and it can be used to measure for example the durability and quality of products which it has been used for in the past such as a light bulb burning out how long does it take for a bulb to burn how long does it take for a balloon to burst a computer uh, to crash or a cylinder head to crack these are all examples that have been used within engineering um, and then we have in the social sciences how long does it take for one to get married to get their first tattoo, to buy a house, or to graduate. So the idea here is it could be used to measure the more negative things such as death and disease, but at the same time it can be used to measure other things that are a little bit more positive, dealing with some of the social stuff, for example. And that is where my own example comes into play. 
for my example, I am interested in looking at how long does it take from someone graduating from teacher's college to land a job as a teacher. So they're going to graduate, a certain amount of time is going to pass before they start their career as a teacher. So for here, I'm revisiting a previous slide, but I'm going to show how to frame your research question to make sure it is appropriate for survival analysis. As mentioning, I'm looking at landing the job as a teacher. So for the when statement, it would be how long does it take for a, a graduate from teacher's college to get a job as a teacher and whether or not they land that job. And then for example, the chance of events occurring should be equal for all subjects. The idea here is that for those I plan on studying and following for X amount of time, they should all have a goal in mind to officially land a job as a teacher. I would not want to include those in my study who perhaps finished teacher's college, but have now decided that maybe teaching is not their thing and are now going to look for work somewhere else. They are not probably the subjects I would like to include within my study. Now the next step involves de defining some key terms and definitions. We have a research question in mind. Now the next step is to sort of define some of those methodological features that will be a part of our study and that will be necessary in order to run a survival analysis. And those features include the event, the time origin, the time scale, and the time to event. So the event is something that needs to be clearly defined. And pretty much the event is what you plan on studying. In my example, I'm interested in those graduating from teacher's college and landing a job as a teacher. So in this case, my event is them landing a job as a teacher. And whether that happens, yes or no. The time origin, on the other hand, is when do you plan on beginning measurement within your study? Um, for example, here I have the diploma and the graduation hat. The idea is the time origin should begin at a specific time. In my own study, I'll be begin or my hypothetical study, I'll be beginning the time origin the moment the teachers, uh, the college students are no longer students, have officially graduated and are now looking at jobs for, uh, for teachers. The next step is to define the time scale. This is your unit of measurement. In some cases, measurement can be in months, years, or even seconds. For example, in failure time analysis, which is used in engineering, when it comes to product dur durability, some things are measured within seconds to see how long it takes for that thing to fail. Um, but for my own example, looking at graduation and landing a job as a teacher, years seems a little extensive. So for this example, I'll be looking at months. And the next step, involves time to event. How long does it take for the event to happen? And this is really the dependent variable in your study and why survival analysis is primarily going to be used. That when period from the beginning of graduation to when that event occurs is a big chunk of time that you plan on measuring and that is the time to event. And hypothetically, the time to event can range from zero to infinity. And I'll explain what I mean by that. So when the time to event has a value of zero, the hypothetical scenario would be the student has graduated as a teacher and officially lands a job as a teacher right away. So a hypothetical example would be the moment they step off the podium, receive their diploma, the moment they walk on to the other side, someone is already shaking their hand, offering them a job as a teacher. It could happen, not to say it can't. Because I'm measuring things in months, it would probably mean that in this case, it took zero months for that individual to land a job as a teacher. On the other hand, when the time to event has a value of infinity, what this means in survival analysis is that the individual or student officially graduates from teacher's college but the moment they begin looking for the job, it just never happens. Um, either because the study is not long enough to uh, capture the event occurring 
or perhaps other things come into play where the individual no longer starts looking, a wide variety of things could happen. And in this case, there is no value that can be placed on that event. So to, just to recap the time to event, because it is sort of an important element of survival analysis, it is the dependent variable of your study. It begins at the time origin and ends when the event has occurred. Time to event can be, range from zero to infinity, and it may never actually occur for some individuals. And back to uh, my example, so from graduation to starting a career, I'm looking at how many months does it take for someone to land a job as a teacher. And with the next slide, I'll provide a quick diagram showing exactly how this could be laid out in a survival analysis. So for example, we have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, uh, subjects on this side who have officially graduated and then we are following them over the months to see how long it takes for them to land jobs as teachers. The way I'm displaying it here is everyone who is shaking hands with someone has officially landed a job as a teacher. We can see in this scenario, there are some arrows that continue. They extend beyond the seven month period. We do not know whether or not they land jobs as teachers, but we can see that there is some variability among subjects on how long it takes for them to land a job. In this case, we do not have anyone landing a job at zero, but we could have that infinite value occurring, especially if individuals were not captured within the study. Now, I wanna talk about a unique feature of survival analysis, what is called staggered entry. Staggered entry just means that not all individuals need to begin at the exact same period of time at which the study begins. For example, let's say that individuals could graduate at different times throughout the year from teacher's college. We have three individuals who graduate at this period of time. We have one individual who graduates at this period and two that graduate in another period. Survival analysis is flexible in the sense that it allows what is called staggered entry. We can have individuals coming in at different periods of time that can all still be included within the analysis. The next special feature of survival analysis, which I've sort of touched upon, is this thing, this element called censoring. What this feature involves is those who are free of the event. They're not fully observed and they provide no information on whether the event does or does not occur. So for example, in the previous um, maps or diagrams, we saw that there were some arrows that continued across the seventh month period. That could be an example of censoring. There is something going on with these individuals where the event never occurs. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it could suggest some nuances to your study or to the study design, suggesting either not enough time is being captured to, to truly capture the event, or there's other elements involved that require further investigation. So to go back to the original uh, diagram, the idea here is we still have the staggered entry taking place where individuals are landing at different times, but we obviously have two individuals here who are censored. The study ends at the seventh month period, and we have no more space to capture whether that event does or does not occur. It's not to say that censoring is necessarily a bad thing because depending on your research question, it could be what you're looking to achieve. For example, if you're looking at a drug relapse after an intervention program, censoring could depict that these individuals are not relapsing based on drug use. Something else could be occurring for these individuals and further analysis might be required. So the take home message uh, for this presentation, for this brief presentation on survival analysis, um, the first thing is to frame your research question. Look at those when and whether statements. Those are a crucial element to the first steps towards a survival analysis. And it's important to start thinking of your analysis in these frames. Um, what's important about these when and whether statements is that they're very basic and very simple. It doesn't require extensive data to do these things, and they can be very flexible in how they are approached. The next step is to map out those methodological features. You need to map out what your event is, your time origin, 
your time scale, and time to event, all features that will be incorporated in your survival analysis and how you conduct the analysis itself. And then of course, it is to consider the usefulness of survival analysis. It is a flexible procedure. It doesn't require a wide range of measures and variables in order to be conducted. Um, at the same time, individuals can be entered at various times throughout your study. And at the same time, we have this element of censoring. It can suggest that other things are occurring among subjects that aren't necessarily captured within your study or other things could be looked at later on. And that's where censoring could play a pretty beneficial role as well. That is the end of my presentation and thank you for watching.